You know, when I was growing up, throwing tantrums didn't get you anywhere, and they sure as hell weren't tolerated. But nowadays, throwing an apoplectic seizure and behaving like a self-entitled brat is considered a legitimate form of political protest. Oh, no. oh we should go. Yeah. <laughs> Sir, please, sir, sir, please, sir, please. Dump the Trump! Dump the Trump! It is not about creating an intellectual space. It is not. Do you understand that? It's about creating a home here. So where the hell did this infantilized, easily triggered, narcissistic, whiny, neurotic, special snowflake generation come from? Why has our society pandered to these overgrown adult babies? Why are they so unreasonable? How do they get so sanctimonious and intolerant of differing opinions? Why is reality such a problem for them? Why do they need safe spaces and trigger warnings? Well, the last question is probably pretty easy to explain. Nowadays, if you claim to be a victim of some kind of perceived invisible fictitious oppression, you can get special treatment and privileges. Just tell people you're an oppressed minority or that you're standing up for an oppressed minority and the system and the populace at large are either willfully or subconsciously biased against you or the minority group you're advocating for and then conclude by saying that someone else's differing views to yours are dangerous to you or said minority group in some way. And before you know it, your voice will be the only one that's allowed a platform. Everyone else's right to speak will be taken from them through censorship or prosecution. So ultimately, these kids know how to manipulate social media, government, academic institutions to gain power by claiming oppression. They are power hungry. But don't think they licked this ability off the stones. Oh no, they learned this from years of playing their parents off of each other to get their own way when they were children. With both parents having to go out into the workforce, stay-at-home mothers in short supply, and marriage having collapsed as an institution thanks to good old feminism, Generation Snowflake was the generation that learned to play on their parents' guilt for having to drop them off at daycare every morning. Many parents report feeling a pang of guilt for not being there for their kids. They instead drop them off at Montessori or daycare or whatever and let someone else who may have different values and morals to them raise their kid. As a consequence, parents can spoil their kids and give in to their demands as a way of, I don't know, punishing themselves for not being there. And their child grows up with an unfulfilled need, the need for validation and the attention of their parents. Psychologist Oliver James has warned that a rapid increase in nursery places has led to a generation of violent little savages. As he puts it, shoving youngsters into nurseries was simply warehousing them so that the government could push mothers back to work to reap income for the exchequer. The author of How Not to Fuck Them Up said, We start off as barbarians, and what makes us civilized is being loved and looked after. If you're an 18-month-old in a nursery, it is impossible for you to not feel threatened. You are surrounded by savages, and you are a little savage too. He told the male, To try to look after three young toddlers is hard, but to try to look after four is just mad. How on earth do you do that well and meet their needs? Mr. James pointed to a study in America which tracked youngsters for 15 years. It showed a correlation between the hours placed with nursery to increased aggression and bad behavior, reported by both parents and nursery workers. The Mail Online has also highlighted how 40 primary school children in England were expelled every day for assaulting their teachers. Violence levels have soared most in Southeast, rising 41% from 2006, 2007, 2010, 2011. Some 8,030 pupils aged 5 to 11 received were expelled in 2010, 2011, a 15% rise over four years. The explosion of violence in the classroom is very plausibly linked to the rise of daycare under new labor, Mr. James said. So basically, Generation Snowflake are behaving like toddlers because they never really fully grew up. 
and they spend the rest of their lives trying to fill the emotional void left by an absent loving parental presence. They take this mindset into adulthood and wouldn't you know it, they gravitate towards movements, ideas and ideologies that are primarily based on emotional arguments rather than intellectual discovery and cold hard uncompromising facts and empiricism. Because facts don't care about your feelings, these millennials reject them on the grounds of how discomforting they are. They want to feel comfortable all the time because it's just how they've been conditioned to operate from their developmental years. While it's hard to look at these angry, demented college kids as victims, that's what they are, and we do need to have some level of sympathy for them. But we also need to realize that they need help, not further encouragement and capitulation to their unreasonable demands. These disaffected, dysfunctional millennials are then preyed upon by Marxist college professors who offer them degrees in bullshit subjects like race or gender studies, and because you can't get a job from these subjects, the only option is aggressive, shouty political activism. Bullshit! These subjects appeal to them because Marxism is always emotionally appealing and speaks to nihilistic and solipsistic thinking. It's not hard to see where this kind of infantilization has led to the rise of the social justice warrior. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button and, of course, subscribe for more. See you next time. Bye-bye.